Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. And in today's Approach in the Scene, I'm coming to you from essentially paradise. I'm in Baja California Sur on the Sea of Cortez, right across from the largest island in the Sea of Cortez. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about how I balance the photographic work and family uh, all in one trip. How do I travel with gear? How do I manage spending time with the family and photographing without you know, running myself ragged, which I do sometimes, or, or just getting too thin and not feeling like I'm doing one or the other well enough. Um, for those of you that haven't been watching, this is Approaching the Scene. I'm Hudson Henry. I'm a Portland, Oregon-based landscape travel adventure photographer and photo educator. And this is a series of weekly videos that I do every Thursday. And it's really just sort of a conversation about all things photographic, whether it's traveling with gear in your family or the state of the industry at the moment or the convergence of video time-lapse and still photography gear or whatever the latest and greatest, coolest new gadget uh, is or talking with other photographers that are out there enjoying, killing it, struggling, whatever it happens to be. So overall, I'd love for you to join the conversation. You can always leave a comment on YouTube. I take those really seriously. You can send a question to questions at HudsonHenry.com and I will always answer some of those questions on in the videos too. So at the end of this, I'll, I'll tackle a question about panoramas that came in in the wake of my doing my, my no parallax point video where I talked about how to calibrate your lenses for panoramic photography. So, you know, I think it's always a challenge traveling with your family and balancing the photography with the family, particularly for those of us that really love working with natural light. So we're really kind of bound by when the light's good. And on days with a lot of sun, it's that early morning, late in the afternoon evening about the same time as dinner hour and you wind up needing to get up really early without disturbing your family and sometimes get to a beautiful location and then by the time you come back they're just starting to wake up and it gets exhausting and particularly it gets really interrupted in the evening when you want to go out and photograph the sunset uh, and I find that the key is to find a place like this where I'm standing right now so Traveling down to here to Baja, it, it, it's actually been a dream of ours for quite some time. We're avid kite boarders, and I've heard nothing but stories about the Sea of Cortez. When I was little, I watched Jacques Cousteau, you know, diving in the Sea of Cortez, and and just all the sea life here and the beauty of it. It's been a place I've wanted to come for a really long time, and I've traveled through a lot of Mexico, uh, but I haven't been down here to Baja California Sur and spent any serious time. And, and this trip has just convinced me that it's so worth coming back regularly. It's amazing, amazing spot. So traveling here with kiteboarding gear, with children, with photographic gear is sort of daunting. We started planning this trip long in advance and we got a group of friends who all enjoy the same thing. We all enjoy kiteboarding, some of us enjoy photography, and we rented this just amazing house. My wife is awesome at researching and she went through VRBO and Airbnb, and we got a house that's in a spot where we come up here on the rooftop You've got a 360 degree view of just a spectacular landscape right off of our, 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 our patio down in the downstairs is just this view. You can sit at the table and you're looking out at the ocean and you're looking at kite borders right outside the window. And we've got a pathway down to a little kite garage on the beach where we can lock our stuff up and we don't even have to carry it up and down the hill. It makes it perfect. You know, if you can do a little research and if you can find a spot where you can stay, where you're where you want to be with your family to photograph, then you just wake up a little bit early and you wind up not disturbing them that much. You know, you come up here on the roof, you go down on the beach, maybe you hike up in the mountains a little bit, but it's right, you're right there. You don't even need to drive to get to it. And then you pop up for breakfast and you're able to have a wonderful day with your family and photograph them and have fun. And maybe you go kiteboarding or whatever it is that you're passionate about hiking in a national park. You know, I think the difference is, is, is doing, planning it out long enough in advance. Let's say you're going to Yosemite to stay right in the valley where you can walk out of the lodge and be where you want to photograph. I think that's invaluable, particularly for those of us with families and even more so for those of us with families with young children. You know, I don't, I don't want to miss a minute of my toddlers growing up. And so taking off and spending hours looking for a location pre-dawn and coming back exhausted and doing the same thing in the evening is not something I want to do on a trip. I want to spend time with my kids. So doing a little bit of research in advance, you know, the logistics for this trip was nothing short of extraordinary. You know, I went through so much time kind of paring the camera down to exactly what I needed. I'm filming this with my Nikon Z6. I brought two lenses for that, the 24-70 to and the 50 
uh, 1.8. I've got the Nikon D850 with an assorted set of, of primes, a 50, a 20, a 16 millimeter fisheye, uh, and a 70 to 200 with a 1.4 teleconverter for shooting sports and action. And then lo and behold, I, I'm seeing that there are tons of frigate birds and condors flying right by at eye level with us staying on this clifftop spot. So I'm able to do some birds and wildlife. And we timed this for a new moon and I know that the Milky Way is rising right out over the ocean from our place. So we've had some low cloud. The wind's been a little down for us kiteboarding. We've only been here for a few days and we have about a week longer, but I'm super excited to see if I can do some time-lapse work with the Milky Way rising. It's rising about 4.30 a.m. and I have about an hour before the sun's gonna wash it out of the sky at 5.30 is you know, pre-dawn, hour and a half before dawn. Um, so there's tons of cool stuff to photograph right here. I don't really need to go anywhere. And I think that, you know, when I get asked that question about how do I balance work and family on these photo trips, it's about having the family with me right where I want to be. I think that's just key. You know, obviously you, they say you can't pick your family, but you know, I, I've got in my partner, Stacy, the perfect adventure partner who's, you know, really, really long suffering when it comes to dealing with my photographic obsession. And, you know, that's another key, finding the right, the right partner in this whole big thing. So you should have seen what it looked like when we took all of the gear out of our car when we landed at this house. We, we have four friends staying with us. Two of the friends flew with us. Between us, we had, my gosh, Stacy Pike, me, John, Sarah, 10 50 pound bags plus a big surf bag with our with our boards and foil boards and everything and you know you, you should the guy at the airport who loaded all the stuff in the van was just a absolute master of using interstitial space i don't know how we all fit along with the gear when he didn't have a roof rack i thought we were just completely boned so um, it's, it's just, it's always such a fun adventure. And I think that just because you have kids doesn't mean that you have to stop having these photo adventures. I think that it's, it's, it's nothing if not enlightening to them. And it's like a, like a bit of early education and I love bringing them and I love sharing the whole experience with them. So that's how I do it. Um, I want to jump to a question that I got from when I posted the no parallax point video. I think, uh, it was ATS 29 or 28. Uh, I did a, a, a portion from my advanced panorama training course, a much longer course that kind of goes into everything, multi-row panoramas, HDR panoramas. That's linked in the, in the description to this video. But, uh, you know, I got a number of questions from people who are used to just, you know, they set up on the tripod and they pivot or even handhold and it, it's assembling panos correctly. And that, that totally works, you know, in a lot of situations. There are times, however, let's say, you know, when you want to keep, part of this deck of the house in the frame at the same time as the distant island and the water all the way to infinity. Or you're photographing something that's beautiful, that's close to you, and you want the background and everything. It winds up that if you have something close to you and then there's a distant background, when you, when you pan the camera to do a panorama, you get parallax where close and distant objects move in relationship to each other. So it's really a problem with having close subjects. The other time it becomes a problem is if you want to do multiple rows and tilt the camera up and tilt the camera down, it can get really problematic if you're not back over that no parallax point. And I had a specific question about someone that has the same exact fluid head as me, you know, where it pans level, you just level it, it pans level, you can level it here at the base and watch the little bubble level, boom, once it's level, you can pan. And also, you know, you can move the camera forward and aft to get a balance where it won't flop at all when you let go. You know, you can tilt it and it stays in perfect balance, sort of like a gimbal. Um, they work great for panoramas and you can calibrate with your fluid head to do single row level panoramas. The problem is when you tilt forward or you tilt back, you're moving that camera out of the parallax point. And in the advanced panorama training course, I can showcase how I use some, some not so expensive tools, just some Arca rails to kind of get out and then a couple of, of panning clamps so that you're both axis, both the rotational and the up down axis are rotating through that no parallax point and you don't have any problem with doing multiple rows or sitting up on top of a mountain wanting to do a panorama of the landscape below you. You can tilt the camera down and, and, and pivot it perfectly level and also over the no parallax point. So I'd say, you know, if that seems at all complicated, I'll demystify it for you in the advanced panorama training course. Just check for the link down below. All right, everybody. 
Thanks so much. I imagine, I'm hoping, you know, there's, we've got a week of good kiteboarding wind and uh, with the kids and the kiteboarding wind, the balance may lean away from photography and away from approaching the scene videos. But if I have time, maybe I'll do another video, you know, uh, and it might be on wildlife or photographing sports in action, but we'll, we'll sort of see where it goes. But I'm looking forward to this next week here. And I got to say, for those of you who haven't been to the Sea of Cortez, this place absolutely rocks. It's off the hook. It is like an adult wonderland like an adult kindergarten it's just like all these people have come here to retire and they sail and they kite and they paraglide and they hike the beach and they stand up paddle and they snorkel and they dive and i'm thinking you know maybe that's something i want to do once the kids go off to school it's it's pretty darn phenomenal so i'm having a blast